it's a fiesta, basically, with all the 4 and a half star goodness that entails only, in this active form, it rides 18 millimeters higher and has a bit of cladding around the outside to make it look more roughy tufty Like a jelly baby wearing walking boots. Suspension is modified to suit and the tracks are 10 millimeters wider and tire profiles tend to be a little higher. The thinking is that if you don't want a small SUV or crossover and why would you? You can have a car that's a bit easier to get in and out of than a normal Fiesta, but will run up and down curbs, in and out of potholes and on and off gravelly car parks and tracks without making you wince, and you don't have to put up with a tall, poor handling, inefficient proper small SUV. Taller. But only by the width of your thumb. Which is, truth be told, only as much taller as you'd want a Fiesta to be, because it gives you the confidence to just drop off a road onto a gravelly lay-by or a bumpy bit of asphalt without you having to worry about smacking the chassis onto the ground. There's quite a sense of liberation about driving a car like that and I'm convinced that's one of the reasons for the ever-expanding popularity of SUVs. There's a sense of security and imperviousness to a proper 4x4, which the active doesn't quite replicate, obviously, but it gets you a small part of the way there, to a puddle and pothole strewn car park from where you walk the dogs or, if your lifestyle replicates the advertising campaigns, go kite surfing or mountain biking. Or it just makes it easier to get in and out in the GP surgery car park, a scenario that mysteriously never makes the brochures. Anyway, it doesn't affect the Fiesta's dynamics overtly. The ride is a bit more gently loping than the regular cars, but it still steers accurately and responsibly, and corners as pleasingly as any other car in the class. Dynamically, it's better with the 1.0 petrol engine than the 1.5 diesel quieter, too because there's less weight in the nose. We tried the 138 bhp petrol version, which is sprightly, but it can be had for 84 bhp, but I reckon you'd want the 98 bhp version or higher to make respectable progress, the 0 to 62 miles per hour time falls from 12.7 sec to 11.0 sec. This 138 bhp variant has a claimed 9.4 sec 0 to 62 miles per hour time and whizzes along easily. There's appeal to the torque of the 118 bhp diesel, but it feels heavier, less agile, and transmits a bit of zing into the body.